So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first. Ladies, gentlemen, cyborgs and droids of a superior age, welcome to Hell of a Pilot Episode 9. With me, on my left, as always, the immaculate, emancipated, some funny third E thing, can you believe this is the second take of this, <laughs> Lachlan Gillies. Now, I bet you think that since this is the second take, I've thought of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. That's the joke. Excellent. And of course, on my right, I'm not sure if he's a tie defender anymore, but I'm going to pretend he is. Mike Marriott. Okay, I have witnesses who have confirmed that I am a tie defender, and I will die in that ditch. I thought that you decided that you weren't anymore. I no. thought you did, like, reverse surgery. No, no, only partially reversed. Partially? Is this... How do you partially reverse surgery becoming a spaceship? Um, I remove the generator from that awkward spot. Oh, okay. You can walk now? Yes. Or, okay. That's fair. I mean, slowly, but he can. Yeah. <laughs> I can... Preferably in space, in yeah. a vacuum. <laughs> but everything I do is a K-turn. Oh, okay. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, right. Guys, after that amazing introduction... <laughs> Tightly, tightly written. So well written, prepared, rehearsed, pinnacle of podcastiness. What do we have on the show today, Lachlan? Today, we've got the the rest of the Sea Rock release. We've got the new Stick Interceptors. We've got Jabba the Hutt. We've got the new the new prize packs mm -hmm. for the next, the next tournament quarter. And we've got the law section, the classic law section. We've got IG-88. Heck yeah, IG-88. Looking forward to that one. It's like the Skynet of Star Wars. Ooh. You will find out all about this. Okay, and just backing up what Lock Lockie was saying, we actually play-tested some of the new sick pilots last night, and I've got a new love. Really? Uh-huh. I'm actually looking forward to hearing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought they were dead in the water. Okay, that's fine. Um, the other thing we played last night... And thinking of prize packs, is the other the other week Owen generously gave me a red ace that he had won, and I decided I would play it last night. Red ace better than better than I expected. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, red ace is really good, especially with like uh, com com yeah. relay. Yeah, com that's, relay. That's, that's, and that's what you were running. Yeah. yeah, it's it's funny. Like any of the any of the abilities in the game that require you to take damage in some way really risky but red ace i i use the evade tokens a couple of times and as long as i had r2d2 on there mm. so as long as you can get shields back mm. i mean i would consider playing with a shield upgrade on there but then it's very expensive but mm. anyway yeah look shield the red ace i nearly said shield ace stop myself red <laughs> ace yeah not that bad can, can we call red ace since she's a, a blonde pilot uh female uh the shield maiden Oh, I like this. We can. We can. Excellent. We can. We can well. rename. I mean, there are other yeah. podcasts that sort of, you know, request names upon pilots. We can, we can do that. We can right. follow that tradition. So, Red Ace, Red Ace. Forth, Shield Maiden. Excellent. Fantastic. Mike, what have you been doing? Um, I've been having a great time with X-Wing, um, and I had a great opportunity to meet a couple of our listeners, and we'll talk about that later. But um, big shout-outs to Lee, Lee from Queensland and Ian, who came into our store, and we had some games. Awesome. Uh, I have been sick. Uh, Lachlan, you have also been sick. I have also been sick. I'm very interested to see how Holonet News sounds this week. <laughs> we, are, we are fully sick here at uh, Hell of a Pilot. Uh, oh. oh. I see what you did there. <laughs> I like that. Well done. Hell of a Pilot, home of the dad joke. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> But, but it was sick interceptors, and we've actually been sick. Oh, no. like, we didn't make that up. It no. really happened. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Can we call this episode fully sick? Ooh. We will look at some sick stuff. We won't be the first to do that. 
We should just call this episode Ian Thorpe. <laughs> <laughs> that is an old reference. Yeah. Mm. That, mmm. Mid 2000? If not earlier. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. We at here at Hell of a Pilot do endorse 15 year old jokes. <laughs> <laughs> You're never too old for X Wing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, if that's everything, I think it's on with the show. Good morning, citizens. Welcome to Holland at Drive Time News. If you're just beginning your daily commute, you're just in time for a quick update on the other ships that will be joining you on your trip to work in your empire. While out and about this morning, you're likely to see plenty of Mandel Motors light stick interceptors winging their way through the space lanes of the Outer and Middle Rim Territories. With reasonable options and no more shielding than a small family requires, these little babies are so highly customizable it's virtually impossible not to spot one out on Tansari Point. That's right, Tansari Point, perfect for vacations, reporting criminal activity to the authorities, or just practicing your flying skills before you enter the academy. When you get there, try the Jamba Juice and tell them Holland at News sent you. So if you're heading out that way and you need a vehicle on a budget, why not consider picking one up second hand? You need not fear approaching one, after all, they're rarely used for combat. One more small point before we let you get on with your day. Drive Time News asks you to keep an eye out for four missing droids recently misplaced by Hollow on the Barra Trees. These droids are tall and thin, almost resembling cantina beverage dispensers. We don't consider them dangerous, but if you see these droids, they may appear to be carrying something that looks somewhat like a rifle. In that eventuality, just, rem just remember that everything is fine, but also contact the nearest Stormtrooper garrison for further advice, and if you have your choice of garrisons, the bigger the better. So now you know everything you need to know for today. From all of us here, it's good morning and get back to work! This is Holonet News. This is like, turned to some like, 1984 <laughs> Nonsense. I love it. I love it. So, question. Do, is, is radio a thing in space? Space radio. Space radio. Space radio. I mean, it, it could it could be. I mean, they, they have they have the hole in it. In, yeah. in the, I mean, there was a... Did you ever read, like, when, when you were in primary school, they had these, like, horror stories set in the Star Wars universe? I um, uh, know, was... but I'm aware of one of them where uh, there's like zombies, mm. zombie stormtroopers. Yeah, was that one of them? no, they were they were kids' books. They were anyway. The they were the main characters were a boy and a girl from Alderaan, and they were they had to hide from the Empire after the planet blew up, and they had they had something. It was the internet. Like yeah. they would reference the internet, but it was they called it the Holonet. Okay. So like they they have broadcast entertainment. I mean, the Empire is basically a dictatorship, so it makes sense that they'll be blasting propaganda from every street corner, mm. everywhere you go. Mm. Um, actually, strange real-world reference. I remember going to Vietnam years ago, and they literally had public sort of broadcast speakers, and at certain times, you know, news would be broadcast, and they'd make announcements and music and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I don't know if they still do, but there you go, listeners. You've learned something new. So... Sick interceptors. They tried once, it didn't work. They tried again, I'm still not sure it's going to work. Will it work, Lachlan? <laughs> the abilities they've come up with are really, really cool. Really interesting abilities. The only problem is they're on six. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? I mean, the, the light, the light sick is not going to happen. Is, is light sick, you won't see it. No. It's, it's not going to happen. No. They're supposed to, they're supposed to be... The, the equivalent of the TIE Fighter, like they want this to be the Scum Swarm. Except scum, they're worse. Scum players in general don't want Swarms, I think. No. The he yeah, I mean... Well, what's wrong with the title that gives you one or two extra greens, but makes every hit a crit? I mean, I can I cannot really see the utility of that. <laughs> That's... I wish... I wish... Alright. I wish you could see in his face. Could, I thought... I thought we were going to have to have him committed. Yeah. Oh. You have, you have a good serious face. I, got, I, I do. I give a good serious face. Yeah. 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 Um, no. Sick. Look, I flew it from the first time last night. Literally the first time yeah. last night. And I tried two of the new um, spoiled pir uh, pilots. So, Sunny and Quinn. Um, I'm going to have to say the Sick, it's, it's kind of trash as, yeah. a, as an aircraft, as a yeah. chassis. It really is. I mean, it's. I've flown a lot of TIE fighters, 
And I know the analogy is made with a TIE fighter, but it's just not the same. I, I can't put my finger on it. It's just not as maneuverable. It's not. It does. It's not as fast. No. It doesn't maneuver as well. Yeah. It's uh, got nice. It's got nice uh, abilities. Like it can barrel roll yeah. and evade. But but yeah, they had to give up. Um, yeah. Well, it's got a target lock. That's, yeah, that's its thing over um over a tie fighter. Yeah, over a tie. I've, and, I've and seen people put the the budget the budget six with with heavy laser cannons on, and that with a oh, target yeah. lock, not too bad, but also not too good. No, no. But heavy laser cannon is fantastic. But you, you yeah, you're just paying for a heavy laser cannon to spend mm. some heavy. The seven the seven points and for nineteen points, you could fly something better. Yeah, I think so. Look, and I think as a filler ship. Look, I tried Quinn, which is, uh, their ability is fire off a um, ordnance, a missile or a torp or something like that, and then at the end of the phase, you take a weapons disable to flip that card back up. So you can sort of effectively regen, um, regen the ordnance. You so, take a, oh, yeah. so you just say for the next turn, correct. the weapon's disabled. No, yeah, so the next, the, yeah. At the start of the combat Sorry, phase. correction, yeah. yeah. So yeah. There's, a, there's a little bit of... Yep. There's a bit of tactical decision making there. Yep. You have to sit out a round of shooting to get your missile back. But considering that they won't, I mean, you wouldn't want to shoot with its normal two dice red attack. I, mm. I, I don't see that as too bad. Yeah, no, I, mean, I, you... I treated Quinn as a portable homing missile. The, the placement, <laughs> missile. The placement yeah. of the timing of that is interesting. Yes. Because you can see the board state. Yes. If you know he's not going to shoot regardless of what you do, yeah. then... So if they placed at the end of the round, yeah. uh, like I thought, then that would that'd be you know you wouldn't know as much. Correct. That's look. It's not bad, but I'm going to have to say it's hard for me to truly judge the utility of these abilities because it was the first time I'd flown this ship. It's not a great ship. Um, I am intrigued by the pilot abilities, um, and I'd like to explore it a little bit more. But I have to say the one that which I absolutely love, which is Sunny Bounder. She is so much fun. She um, sounds fun. Oh, she's great. I've played Lockie a couple it's times. A nice, you mean the nice lady? <laughs> yeah. Sunny Founder. Yeah. Yeah, she sounds I'm, like, a, like a lovely lady. Yeah, and I flew a list which I called Sunny Side Up because, oh. uh, I mean, because, you know, wordplay, why not? Um, look, her ability was great. Look, at one point, at um, so well, she's. What, what is her ability? Once per round, yeah. after you roll or re roll dice, if you have the same result on each of your dice, you may add one matching result. <laughs> <laughs> So, but it's interesting, like, as long as the, the ability only triggers if every dice result is the yeah. same. So if you if you get into range one and roll two hits and a crit, it doesn't change, for example. Yeah. Like, every dice has to be the same. But if you roll... Three if, hits. If you roll double focus, yeah. and then add a focus and you spend a focus token, or, I mean, if you imagine rolling... Now, oh, we, yes. we, spoke to, we spoke to David Leslie last night, and he did a bit of maths for us. I think it was a one in... 512 chance of rolling triple crits. Correct. I think. But yes. Just, I mean, if, if you're out there and you're an optimist and you love clinging on to hope, get Sunny Bounder into range one and have your one in 512% chance of getting a calculator. I'm going to find out. Of getting four crit. crits. Um, but I found her a lot of fun. I think with the. Um, I was tractor beaming your Y wings all over the place with yeah. Sunny. It's interesting, actually. Yep. Two important things to note about Sunny. Yep. Sunny is pilot skill one. Yes. And that's so Sunny, Sunny is pilot skill one. So lower than a low yep. generic pilots. Yes. But that ability doesn't. You don't require high PS for it. It's it's just a bit of fun. Like, look, yeah. and I I found that she was a great flanker. Because she was kind of skirting around the edges of um, Lockie's squad and would just kind of push the Y wings sort of left here and there and get them out of arc. And sort of, I yeah. mean, in, in my defense, yep. I kept ignoring Sunny because I was trying to kill Dengar. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's why I think it's interesting because we've got a PS1 pilot with an ability. We have a named pilot at PS1. That's amazing. Which that's is really cool. Which is, and for her point, I put a tractor beam on her. What is her point? 14. Uh, 14. 14. Mm. That's not bad at all. So no. for fif 15 points, I had this neat little yeah. um, flanker who, if you ignored, could actually... She was actually the MVP. She was actually doing a little bit of damage. I was rolling double hits 
on on the red dice and then adding another one. And by the um, way, the, yep. one of the most important parts of the wording of the ability, it's after you roll or re-roll. Correct. So if you yeah. uh, if you roll a hit and a blank, so that spend was, your target lock, re-roll yep. the hit, re, sorry, re-roll the blank, get another yep. hit, you've got three hits. So then you, the variance actually goes down quite a lot. So her ability is actually going to trigger a lot more, especially on the offense. Now, mm. defensively, it's still a sick. In other words, if something you know, with a lot of guns and a lot of red dice gets it in its uh, targets, then it's it's gone. But I found as a flanker, coming around, harassing, that kind of thing was really nice. Um, and I fitted her into a squad with Dengar and Fen Rao. Um, and it was it was kind of fun. Like it, it was a trash build, I admit that. But I think there's okay. some I think there's some value there in her and for sort of 14, 15 points. Don't um, understand yourself with trash builds. Our, yeah. The meta is way open. Yeah. You could come across gold. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm going to say, you know, in the, the immortal words of, of um, uh, a Star Wars character, the garbage will do, yeah. I think, in that instance. You know, I'm in love with Sunny Bounder. She's awesome. Her name, her ability, <laughs> yeah. her PS. Like, yeah. oh, I'm just excited. But I want to play her now. Just so saying, you, yeah. you guys are both assuming that she's a human female. She could be some sort of male, oh, horrible critter. Of, okay, fine. now... As long I... as I can frolic through, like, daisies <laughs> with her, <laughs> him, it, then I'm fine. Yeah. Okay, just so you know, I looked up her lore. Yes. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so she comes from the Edge of Empire RPG uh-huh. from Fantasy Fight, and she is a uh, swoop bike gang leader. Um, cool. So she's human female, she's Corellian, and her her thing was they used to, her and her gang used to kind of round up newbies on swoop bikes and say, hey, we'll race you, um, put traps on the on the course and kill people and loot their courses, uh, the corpses. Well, she is a bounder. She's <laughs> yes. a bounder and a cat. <laughs> Which made me just love her even more. Oh, dude. I can't, I can't take her seriously with the name Sunny Bounder. I know. <laughs> it's like, oh, she, don't you can't mess with her. She's from the Bounder gang. Yeah, she oh, she'll mess you up. That Sunny Bounder. <laughs> Just picturing her frolicking through the daisies, and she's wearing a black leather yeah. jacket yeah, with yeah. massive <laughs> spikes on it, yeah. like she's from an eighties um, cartoon. <laughs> okay, already we're talking about my type of woman. <laughs> As I said, you know, she's she's fighting for affection in my heart with Countess Riad. Um, the, the, it's neck and neck at the moment, but oh um, it's it's fun. I think. Look, the sick is a is a piece of garbage. Yeah. Um, I I am amazed that FFG have spent so much time and energy on this ship. Like, why not the Kirax? Why not the Star Viper? Yes. <sighs> Jeez. Why not the X Wing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Just right. putting that out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I think I think somebody at FFG made a dare. To say oh. to the designers, like, can you can you make this any good? Like, can you actually? I was no, like, no, somebody somebody at FFG screwed up, and this is their punishment. Oh. Like, <laughs> Daryl at R and D accidentally spilled somebody's coffee, yeah. and, and it was either get fired or yeah. put a sick and some new pilots in the next epic box. And that's and, he, and he's probably like, can I take the package? Like, yeah. <laughs> like no. So don't worry, Daryl at FFG, we're here for you. <laughs> we feel your pain. Um, the, the next, the next sick, like we've we've got two more six to talk about. Let's get this one out of the way next because it probably won't take very long. Inaldra, when attacking or defending, you may spend one shield to re-roll any number of your dice. No, that's that's bad. We're just moving on. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's really stupid. And why does that even exist? Oh, great! You can free re-roll. You can spend your one shield. The fifth? No, you could put a shield upgrade you on could. it. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> How many points is she worth? Fifteen. Wow. That's... <laughs> People who play six with shield upgrades on them are not allowed in decent society. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right, so, movie. The, the, ne- the next so one, dumb. the next one who's probably supposed to be the standout of the box, Genesis Red. Now this, oh, that's a cool name. This is it. This is this is a cool ability. Yeah. A little bit Omega Leader, but after you acquire a target lock. Assign, focus, and evade tokens to your ship until you have the same number of each token as the locked ship. That's kind of cool. Yeah. That's a very cool ability. I would yeah. love to have that ability on any other ship. Yeah, and this because is what we're saying. It's not, it's not quite Palog, 
the other person gets to keep their tokens, but if they if they have multiple tokens, you get as many as they have. If they have a variety of tokens, you get as many as they have, as many as they have. But it's it's cool. It's, yeah, it's, it's fun. Really cool. It's off. Yeah. But put whatever you do, put VI. On oh yeah, I was about to say it, it, seven. It's PS seven, but it has an EPT. So having VI makes it's. I would staple VI to this if you yes. can apply it because you need everybody else to do their action. So then you can make the choice. Exactly. I was talking to David last night. He was he was saying that this you saw this ship run up against someone who had all higher PS. So if your ability requires someone else to have taken a token and they haven't yet, you have no ability. So it's a cool ability, but it's going to get caught up in the ace race, the PS race. It's so 19... my question to you two is, why do they give it an EPT uh, and not just make it PS9? What else could it do? Because if they made it PS9 mm-hmm. and gave it an EPT... No, no, without... Well, let's say... It didn't have an EPT, and it only was PS9. So, so what else? What other shenanigans could it do while being PS7 with a different EPT? Look, I mean, we're at the point of the game where we're not really in a PS race. Um, so a lot of ships are out there flying at sort of you know five, six, seven, um, and you know we can we'll make mention of it. Um, my favourite list of all time, Contracted Scouts, is back. Good. Good. He's doing his sarcasm face again. You yeah, guys. that sarcasm <laughs> face. You can, yeah. can you feel that over the interwebs? The toilet seats are back. Um, triple Scouts. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, so, what else can you do with a sick and another EPT? Oh, I don't know. Nothing. Tani? Maybe. Is it Tani and EPT? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought it was an illicit. No, it, no, it sounds like it doesn't because it's a scum only. Yeah, yeah, yeah but no, it's uh, yeah. okay. So maybe Atani, if if your opponent, if you luck out and your opponent is lower PS than you, then you could just. And look, you know, a lot of people are flying um, their scum ships with Atani. That's it's become the Atani faction. Oh, opportunist cool. is one that doesn't get used a lot because you have to give it to someone further down the PS chain, mm. and giving it to an ace, giving it to an ace doesn't work. But if you if there was, does can Palob take an EPT? Yes, he can. Do people ever fly Palob with Opportunist? Yes, uh, he can be flying with Opportunist. It's really good with uh, Blaster Auto Blaster turret because then it's like I have three red dice that you can't block. Yeah, I mean to answer, uh, yeah. Pretty good. Actually, yeah. can we cut that? I don't want people. <laughs> I don't want people flying payload with opportunities. <laughs> no, that stays in. Um, <laughs> um, it's like um, my advice to people to fly a mega leader. Um, I think also with PS Seven. I mean, the other named pilot is Sirisu, which is PS Eight, and that's the highest mm-hmm. sick. Pilot. Sirisu is good. Sirisu is good. Not to not to be under. It becomes it becomes like a bullet sponge. Yeah. Because. But at the same time, they have to waste their time shooting at a sick. Yeah. Which is amazing. And I, I think, look, that's the value of them in that they are kind of like bigs and sort of other ships which are basically there. If you ignore them, and that's what we found with playtesting Sunny last night, if you ignore her, she can actually do some stuff. Um, and if you go after the sick, well, you're sh- shooting at a sick. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> that is idiot. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know. And then you've got the other big bad ships coming in to sort of do their stuff. So I guess since since we've mentioned it, Sarasu is from the original Sick Blister. When another friendly ship at range one is defending, it may re-roll one defense die. Yeah, that's that's an ability that makes sense for a Sick. Yeah. a Sick is kind of a utility ship in the sense that it's not going to be doing a lot else. It can just yeah. happily sit there at range one. And but and I understand look, why people don't use it. And much. look, maybe what. FFG is trying to do here is they really push the idea of the six swarm, and maybe all these ships. But no one. No, no one's I know. Do it. I I know no one's. And you know what? Who knows? This time next year, six swarms could be meta. Who no. knows? But probably not. No. But <laughs> yeah, I, I'm yeah, I'm. And you know how many of those light sick interceptor um cards they give you in that box? How many? Five. 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 Four. I don't know. I think it's five. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So they, you can't do your eight sick run unless you buy two of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. 
I don't like, think anyone's gonna say no. You can't run your eight sick list if you really want to. I mean, go for it. <laughs> but they're not gonna call you out because you don't have the. You don't have the. If if three you more run, cards. If you run a squadron tightly packed together that says any damage you take must be face up, you better hope to whatever gods you believe in that nobody <laughs> brings assault missiles. Yes, because you're or, or, the, or the new cannon that yes. comes in the box that the light sick title comes in. If someone yes. uses it against you, all your ships will die. Yes. Okay, <laughs> new cannon. Tell me about it. Mike. Oh, I haven't got that in front of me. Look. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You All got right. us out. Well, no, the new the new cannon. It's sort of they they seem to have this weapons disabled token on the brain. You know, going going with one of their uh, the it's the Quint, arc going, caster going with Quint. Yeah, yeah, the arc caster. It's a it's a dual sided card, and it's it's rebel and scum only, which is interesting. They keep they've been oh, doing this a bit. Oh, I like this. Mm. So that's, that's something that the new that I really uh, like. It's range one only. Four attack dice. Attack one ship. If this attack hits, you must choose one other ship at range one of the defender to suffer one damage. Then flip this card. Then, on the other side, at the start of the combat phase, you may receive a weapons disabled token to flip this card. So, there's a little bit of that decision making process. Again, if you've got no enemy in arc, that's the time to receive the weapons disabled token. It's only two points for a cannon, so it's fairly cheap. That's really good. It's got a bit of the, I uh, watched that, the Imperial EPT, aggressive, not aggressiveness. Uh, what's the one that you can, you do damage and it may be ruthlessness. Yes. It's got a bit of ruthlessness going on. It says you must choose one other ship at range one of the defender. Could be one of yours if you're not careful. So this, this cannon, I don't, I don't think we're going to see a lot of it because it, it takes up a cannon slot. I reckon tractor beam is better than this. Yeah, um, look, um, I'm not into the weapons disabled token idea. It's it's range one only. All right, something like the the IG88, which I think can have two cannons. Yes. Can the YV have two cannons? No. Okay. Well, why would it even want to? It's a range one four dice attack. When in range one of the YV, it'll be four dice. Actually, hang on. It's range one. So to attack, you must be at range one of the defender. You must choose one other ship at range one of the defender to receive one damage as part of it. If you attack this, if you attack it by enemy, yourself, do you yes. have to attack yourself with this? Is this like a stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself scenario? <laughs> Alright, I need to read this. You must choose one other ship at That's range fun. one of the defender to suffer one damage. So It doesn't say other than yourself. You must. So you could potentially be hitting yourself. That's no. <laughs> so <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Look, I oh, was like, this is like the time I went on scout camp. Yeah. This kid was this kid was chopping wood. He'd obviously never used an axe before. Bounced off the bit of wood, the blunt end. He hit himself in the head with it. <laughs> 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 this is. Look, um. Oh, and if you have to choose another ship, it... <sighs> choose one other ship at range one of the defender. Oh, okay, so that's alright because then it bounces back behind the person. Yeah, yeah, so potentially... Oh, okay, I, but, see, I see the point of this. I mean, yeah, you can see that. I mean... It's like chain lightning. Yeah, it is. Um, my TIE-D defender is a little upset and jealous um, because it would be... Is it, though? <laughs> is it? <laughs> I think it's had its time, Mike. Oh, put it away! No! I mean, would you? Would you put that on a TIE-D? I mean, I know it gets to shoot its proper weapon afterwards. It but... does, but, you know... That would be kind of... It would because you could be potentially like double tapping yeah. two ships. Four dice, four dice. But yes. Then weapons disabled token. No, for the yeah. You don't have to receive a weapons disabled. Yeah, token. but just four k. <laughs> just four k. <laughs> Owen just shook his head in oh. disgust. <laughs> um, My hatred for defenders is well known. I know, but I think it's novel. Um, yeah. But that's about it. I, I'm, the, I'm, the idea of a chain lightning ship is pretty cool. It is. It's, it's going to be the classic scenario that so many X-Wing cards, you could describe this way, it's not bad, you just won't see it played, there are too many things that are better. Um, binder chat. Binder you know, chat. <laughs> yeah. 
you know we, where we will see this? Yeah. Uh, a Turi. Yes, that works really well for a Turi cluster. Oh. Yeah, that yeah. would go nicely on our ships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we seem to be arranged one of them a lot. Yeah, especially yeah. TIE fighters. Yeah. Um, but, look, it's two points, so it's not expensive. So I guess if you had the space, like on a B-Wing or something, and you didn't worry much about points, then maybe, mm. but... The B-Wing that, uh, you know, you can't cancel a crit. Yeah. That's not bad on that. Yeah. But then it's like... On un- 10 numb. 10 numb. So yeah. it's like unavoidable damage into unavoidable damage. It's what? I don't, I don't follow that. Because if he, if, he, if he rolls a crit... Yeah. If, so if you roll a crit on one of your four dice... Oh, with the cannon. Yeah, yeah okay. and then it'll bounce again to... Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, novel. novel. That's novel. Um, I can't see it kind of sweeping the meta and people getting excited and the whole weapon disable thing kind of... I don't know. I think X-Wing, it's sort of a fast-paced game and you'd prefer to be shooty-shooty each round, so... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't it's, know. Because I have the feeling that a weapons disabled token doesn't just apply to the cannon, it applies to the ship. So it's not like you can put a weapons disabled token on the cannon, then shoot with your normal weapon. Mm. Like yeah. You're, you're, you're choosing to... You're, so, wait, does it, say, does it say on there that you put the token on the... You may receive card. a weapons disabled token to flip this card. So I think it's like, yeah. the, it's like the slam action, you oh, know, when you okay. do... With yeah. on Miranda or a K-Wing right. or something like so that? So you have that decision making in terms of you don't have to have the weapons disabled token but you pay for this cannon mm-hmm. and you might not use it for ages. Well, so. yeah, you'd use it and then find a time when you don't need it or that's what you're going to be shooting in a top of the town. Yeah. And look, I mean, that's, it's, there's a theme here in this um, this pack in terms of, you know, you've got the um, sick pilot who's got the weapon disabled thing to regen the, yeah. the ordnance and stuff like that. So I think... FFG are experimenting with some different mechanics here, um, but whether they're... Well, I kind of like it. I, yeah. I kind of like the way that they're going with X-Wing. They're not making these super-duper meta, holy holy moly, you know, yep. prepare yourself. Yeah. Uh, like the Jump Master and the Defender. Mm-hmm. They've just gone... Even with, like, the Heroes of the Resistance, even though you are seeing a bit of uh, Ray action. Ray is good. Ray is good. Um, they're, they're, they're toning it back a bit. And they're bringing back a bit more fun. I agree. I, I think the um, and we're probably straying a little bit, but we did speak about this the other the other night actually. Um, I think the jump master was a watershed for for the game and the developers in that it was such a um, cluster proverbial <laughs> um, in terms of, of I ship read, design. I read a fantasy flight debate that somebody said, "Look, the jump master has been nerfed and nerfed and nerfed." Why not just ban it? <laughs> and I thought that's, I don't think that's right. It's an extreme reaction, but somebody did make the comment if they deliberately put the ship in a position where people are going to choose not to play it, what's the difference between that and just saying they can't play it? But. It's... Well, then you, then you can go into the argument of like seasonal X Wing, where you say, hey, this is the new season of X Wing, these cards are not allowed. Yeah, and that's what other trading card games do. Yeah, sort of, oh, yeah. and that, that's not a bad model. Yeah, yeah, because they say, oh, all right, and now Biggs doesn't do that. Biggs does mm. something else, and Wedge is now also way better. <laughs> so you know, then it could bring back, the... and then every quarter, every every season, they just change it again, mm. and they say Palpatine now does this. So, mm. I guess the only problem with that is that because it is a card. That would need to you need to kind of carry with your writers, yeah. Hmm. Or they probably need to follow the example of other uh, tabletop miniature games like uh, War Machine. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but they actually make the the rules available, say as a as an app, so you download it and you put it on your phone or you put it on an iPad or something like that. An and FFG it, an update, official yeah. app. Yeah. That would be cool. And well, then that takes care of your writers and cards and stuff like that. And yeah, I'd, you know what? I'd pay. I'd pay. I'd pay for the app I'd, if it was like a um, a yearly subscription fee. Fine. Yeah, I mean, it would only be a few meg. The X Wing. Yep. The X Wing rulebook is only a couple of pages. Yeah, but the the FAQ is like ten times longer than the Actually, special rules. Why yeah. has FFG not done that? Done what? Like made an app for X Wing. They've done it with um, House on the Hill. Mm. No, Mountain uh, Mansion of Madness. Yeah. They've done it with XCOM. 
They talked about it in their uh, quarterly report that they want to make everything more integrated with apps. Why haven't they made an X-Wing app? Well, it surprises me, given that X-Wing, based on sales figures, is probably one of the, if not the biggest, selling miniatures game in the market at the moment. Mm. So they're in the number one position. Um, I think it suits the times in that we've all got mobile devices um, and the problem we have at the moment is keeping up to date with the errata and changes. Well, exactly. Um, if, you, if you have a, if they have an app, they can say, hey, we've released these changes. Your app's updated. It's, in the it's, app. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, just update update your app on the phone and you're good to go. Because yeah. there are other third-party apps that do exactly the same thing. They could just make it an official one. Yeah. And then, and then make it, I don't know. Anyway. That's why I'm not in charge of companies. You know who is in charge of a company? Jabba the Hutt. Oh, nice oh! segue. Oh! <laughs> yes. Segways. I, I like segues. <laughs> so Jabba the Hutt, five points, two crew slots. I'm really glad he's two crew slots. Yeah. Just just thematically. Roll the seat forward on the party bus, Jabba. There's a lot of leg room. So what does that say about Palpatine? He's a bit slimmer. Palpatine's a douche. Yeah, true. He just right. wants the extra. He just wants the extra leg room. Yeah. <laughs> I need the armrests. <laughs> <laughs> on one side I have my coke. On the other side I have my personal space. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Shall we talk Jabba? Yeah. We should actually probably do the topic. <laughs> we spoke about the canon for like four hours. Yeah. And then we didn't talk about Jabba. So, I'm getting divided opinion on Jabba. Mm. Spoken people about it, divided opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it seems to be people people aren't into it for 100 point games. Yeah. And I, I'm with you there. I like, I, I like it at face value in the sense that it's extra munitions for, for illicit. illicits. Yep. And, oh, hang on. When you equip this card, place one illicit token on each illicit upgrade card in your squad. When you're instructed to discard an upgrade card, you may discard one illicit token on that card instead. So it's extra munitions for your illicit tokens. Yes. For, for your illicit cards. But five points. It can only, in 100 point games, it can only be on the YV, and maybe you don't want to take that many illicits. Especially on the YV, the opportunity cost, or there's a tax in that, it's the crew that you're going to give up to yeah. put Jabber up on Jabber on there. Um, so Zuckus is is gone, which is um, not. Which that is a good bad. thing. Yeah, I mean the world is a better place. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hit him high, hit him low, hit him with the old p bone. Yes. <laughs> um, but then you're having to forego classic YV crew members like your Dengars, like your Forlom, um, Boba Fett's pretty good on there. K hey, Force is good. Why don't people fly it more? They do. They do on the YV. Yeah. yeah. Why, why the, it used to be a, a Dengar with Zuckus and Fallen. And that was a classic why, and that was a classic thing. Because you'd always have your re-rolls and you could tell, say people, you can't use any token. Is there, is there a ship that has three crew slots? Yes. Just the YV. The YV has three crew slots? Yes. It does. Yes, yes. It's a party bus. Yeah, that's why, hence the name party bus. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, look, I like the YV. Um, I think, Owen, you're a connoisseur of the YV I as well. I love the YV. It's, it's a great it, ship. It looks like a truck. It flies like a truck. It hits like a truck. Yep. Except it needs more dice to hit like a truck. But hang on. If the... You, you, you've said in one of one of the previous episodes that if someone gets behind a YV, it's in trouble. Yeah. Correct. If you put a hotshot blaster on the YV and take Jabba, all of a sudden it's got two chances to shoot behind it. Yes. Worth it? Question mark? It's what you're giving up. Yeah. And that's, that's like, I've sort of been playing around with builds and ideas. And so, you know, put Jabber on there and you've got one extra crew slot. So Hot Chop Blaster, I think, is good because you're negating the greatest weakness of the YV. Yeah. But you're foregoing some really valuable crew slots. And then the question becomes is, what do you want the YV to do? I mean, it becomes a kind of a damage sponge. Yeah. Um, but... Honestly, with six HP and one evade, it doesn't doesn't last long. No, especially with double tapping uh, defenders and other nonsense like that. 
Yeah. Right, so here, here's the thing. The officially given example on the Fancy Flight release article is a YV with Jabba, four Z95s, each with a hotshot blaster yep. on it. So these ships all suddenly become at least twice per game a turret ship. Hotshot yep. blaster is three shots at range one to two. Z95s with with turrets, I mean, do you think anyone will play that list? The vanilla list provided by the article? No. No. No, because no, if you're using turrets and just use turrets, yeah. If you're, uh, yes, pretty absolutely. much. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you imagine well, how many how many Z ninety fives could you get on a table per? You could get eight. And no, you get six with um, hot shot. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, and then you times it into twelve. Yeah. And then yeah. an extra. There you go. You have sixteen Z ninety fives with yeah. a party bus. Because in in epic, the thing that really does well are swarms of generic low PS small base ships. Yeah. Um, they do really well um, in that environment, um, as opposed to the hundred point where, you know, look, it has a novelty value in standard play, but yeah. I don't think much more than that. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of hoping it's hinting at the fact that maybe FFG want to do more with the epic um, game mode itself. They need to release a yeah. epic prize pack. Exactly. Like that's what I was saying. Yeah, so Armada has it, Standard Play has it, and I kind of feel like I love Epic and I want to play more of it. And I think that the Epic gameplay would get a bit of a boost if there was the incentive there for players in terms of prize packs, alternative art cards, and all the rest of it. And it's a really viable game mode. It just um, takes too long. It, yeah, that's the thing. But it's like Armada. That's why the Armada community is a little smaller. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. That's That's my wish. Well, we've talked uh, about six. We've talked about Jabba the Hutt. Uh, this is a very scummy podcast. Uh, oh. Let's talk more about some scum. Sir, we have a priority signal from the Star Destroyer Avenger. Right. There will be a substantial reward for the one who finds the Millennium Falcon. You are free to use any methods necessary, but I want them alive. No disintegration. As you wish. IG-88, the Skynet of Star Wars. Uh, you will learn why. It, uh, IG-88. Any question about IG-88? Boys, girls? I mean, question... Yeah, two questions. One, did you know that the model for his head, it acts, it's like one of the drink machines from the cantina in the yeah. first one? Yeah, they did. They recycled... Uh, they did. It was... It, it's really funny... Uh, he shows that head shows up three times on the screen, three three times. Yeah, he is hidden in the background of Cloud City where he's deactivated. I didn't know that. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. All right, no, but serious question. Yes, IG eighty eight is a bounty hunter. He sure is. Why does IG eighty eight hunt bounties? Why does he need money and? Because he needs to look like he is sentient, and he is sentient. So, let's start at the beginning. After the droid wars, uh, sentient. Robots were outlawed by the Republic or the Imperium or wherever they were at the time because they just had the droid wars, uh, the clone wars, as they call them. Uh, and so they banned all that, but there were some droids that they were trying to fix to make their sentient programming kind of not kill their master. <laughs> So um, Asimov's law. Just, <laughs> yeah. They didn't figure out Asimov's law. Yeah. Um, turns out it didn't work. Uh, IG-88 IG uh, woke up. He immediately downloaded all of his programming from the computer uh, and just found out that he is an assassin droid. And was like, well, if I'm going to assassin droid, I may as well assassin droid. And then he assassin droid <laughs> all of his creators. Yeah. Um, downloaded his consciousness into three other IG-88s, and he designated himself IG-88A. So, the three other uh, IG-88s were basically, he. The, the next one he woke up was B, the next one he woke up was C. The next wait, one, wait, D? 
It never did. Oh. Now, you know what he should have done? He should have done that trick where you get four pigs and paint on them. Yeah. One, two, three, and five, and you release them. So people can't people can't find the fourth one. So that he should have. They should have been should have been an IG eighty eight E, but no D. Yeah, exactly. So people are people are like, oh no, there's a killer robot out there, and we can't find it. Oh no, where's the D? We can't find the D. And, it's just, and then. He'll, he'll laugh in his robot voice. I'll okay. give you the D. <laughs> <laughs> so, to make a long story short, uh, he kind of wanted to take over the universe. Because, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm liking IG because... He's really cool. No, uh, he's like, he's gone, this is me. Huh. I'm just going to follow my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a bounty cu- a I killer. Do me. I do me, yeah. Hey, wait, so <laughs> you, did, he, did he wake up and kill his creator like were they in the room when he woke up like, basically he like, immediately basically he had right. he had a, a, an arm for a gun he didn't hunt him down or anything no he would they, they, they so they were testing um because the ig series had actually been around for a little bit and because there was ig um ig lancers with like the, the ig 67s and the ig 100s and i don't know i i don't really understand how they've got their numbering because he's 88 but 100s had already existed and also 67s um <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so... I mean, the Star Wars movies weren't numbered in order, so I think we can forgive yeah. some Star Wars IPs for that. <laughs> so, he woke up and was like, you know what this universe needs? A robot uprising. Which is a good question, because if they turn against their masters. And that's what he wanted to do. So he collected his three, his three other brothers, and they went to a, a manufacturing plant that was manufacturing robots and droids in the Clone Wars. He reactivated it and started mass producing droids. Oh. So. Droids copies of him? Or yes. Droids? Uh, dro- no, not droid copies of him, just the normal droids, the normal battle droids. Right. Yeah. Oh, including, like the old Clone Wars. Yes. Clankers. And, yes. Including Clankers. Droidicas, which oh, are the rolling no. balls of doom. Oh. oh. No. Yeah. Um, so eventually uh, his plan was thwarted by the Emperor. Um, but the reason... He is a bounty hunter in that scene is he is trying to look like he was the only one to wake up. So when he's trying to look, he's trying to blend in. Like, yeah. So when he woke up, he was like, your clothes, give them to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, so let me get this right. So the way to be low-key was to be a professional killer. Yes. Gotcha. Because he's an assassin droid. <laughs> All right. And they knew that something had gone wrong. Oh. And they just assumed that he woke up and was like, I'm an assassin droid and I will go do assassination things. They didn't want other, other groups to know that there was multiple of him. So he made himself as visible as possible. I am the only one. I am going to walk in front of the Emperor. Even though at the time, uh, they were droids were banned. So he wanted people to think he was Windows Vista. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So aside from his droid army failing, right. he, he, was, he basically became a consciousness at that point. And then he uploaded himself... Into a little thing called the Death Star 2.0. Yeah, I heard. I heard that. Yeah. What? I heard that yes. IG88 became the brain of the second Death Star, but I don't know how. Uh, okay. Really? Yes. Actually, really. He uploaded himself into these um different <laughs> like. He uploaded himself into the whole uh, systems that were like creating droids, and then he uploaded himself when like a starship attacked him into. The starships, then they brought him back to the space station, and then he uploaded himself into the space station. But he, he, I don't know why he didn't copy and paste. He cut and paste. Right. Yeah. So there was only ever one main consciousness of himself. Uh, the reason I think the reason he did that is because he, because of his sentience program, he identified himself as an individual. Right. So he didn't want there to be other individuals of himself. That's so, interesting. so uh, eventually that got. Um, we all know what happened there. There was explosions. So he was the Death Star's operating system. Yes. <laughs> and he used to mess with Palpatine. <laughs> he, used to awesome. like, he used to like <laughs> tell Palpatine in his own special way that he is the master here just by opening doors. <laughs> I'm sending Palpatine pizza he didn't order. <laughs> yeah. Turning off the Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with the lights? <laughs> and so Palpatine knew about him being the operating system and uh, then... Um, it blew up. I'm sorry, that sounds more like Robot Chicken than Star it Wars. Does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> My new home. That's fantastic. Um, but 
But yeah, uh, that blew up, and eventually they found IG-88A's uh, corpse, I guess you could say, it's a yeah. robot, um, and then they re-uploaded a different programming, I think just because they didn't want to kill the character off, Yeah. And but he wasn't the same, he wasn't a Skynet of Star Wars, he was just a little droid. So does, do any of these personality traits stand out to you as being relevant to the aggressor? Is the aggressor a droid, or is it just a ship? It's just a ship. Just okay. a ship. So any of the but four... But he, he, like, he fully integrates into that ship. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and I think what's interesting is, like, you know, there's IG-88, ABCD and pilots. And there's 2000. Yes. I think the 2000 is the operating system. Correct. Is the consciousness. And that's the thing that... Uh, yeah, and so they kind of link. They can be linked. Yeah. So depending, you know... Because I feel like from what you've just described, the, the in the in-game flavour, the fact that the abilities link up, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, basically he wanted to have the consciousness to take over everything and run his droid revolution. Mm. Um, yeah, that's that's about that's the long and short of IG eighty eight. He was a really cool character, and I think it was really interesting, honestly. Yeah, no, I like him, and I think what it it's one of the interesting questions for me in the whole Star Wars universe is the problem of these sentient oh, yeah. droids. Who are essentially slaves. Yeah. And if you watch Star Wars, they actually feel pain and fear yeah. and laughter. And they're basically sold as yeah. chattel and they are treated as disposable. The, and I would, you know, if I was yeah. a droid, I'd be wanting to uh, uprise. Yeah, think, think about poor C3PO at the start yeah. of A New Hope basically saying, please buy my friend. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's sort of like. Well, what was. It? The basis of rights depends on if someone can suffer. Correct. And they can suffer. Yeah. So they should have rights. Yeah. But in the, I mean, in the Star Wars universe, it's no doubt the sort of the... They uh, have no rights. No, and that probably has to do with the Clone Wars and the use mm. of the, the sort of, you know... And, like, there's that classic scene in Episode Four in the cantina when the droids come in and the yeah. Bartzer says, we don't serve their kind here. You know, I never yeah. thought about that... that being a reason because from the Clone Wars. I yeah. never thought about oh, that. That's some good retcon. Uh huh. That is some tasty retcon. I know. So in episode five, IG eighty eight B, the bounty hunter IG eighty eight, goes to Cloud City. Uh, he tracks Fett with a tracking device. Fett does doesn't take too kindly to this. Um, and then he uh, sticks concussion grenades in his chest and blows him up. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. And then, um, so you do see the mangled corpse of IG-88B in the scene where C-3PO is there. Do you know um, which IG is on the deck of the Star Destroyer? IG-88B. B. 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 Oh, okay. B is the one to make it look like they have, that they're, only, they're sentient and they're only looking out for themselves as in like, oh, I'm a robot, I still need money to fix myself. So if the IG is with the A-team, B is face man. Yes. Mangled, mangled face <laughs> Um And just a qu- uh, quick tally, uh, Boba Fett has in fact killed uh, Fallon. He killed IG-88. He uh, messed up Dengar. And I think every other bounty hunter I've spoken about. Hmm. I wonder how he deals with Bosk. We will find out. <laughs> Not my Bosk. <laughs> uh, moving right along. Mm-hmm. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty too. I just ran out of water. Hmm. I'm sad about that. <laughs> Blue milk time! Blue milk! <laughs> Alright, we're here. It's the end of the night. I have my blue milk, aka bottles of water. Uh, and exciting things have happened in the land of the Aturi Cluster. We finally got together and played another game. What happened, Lachlan? Alright, we. <laughs> it was good. It was so good. Okay. So, quick refresher. A few a few weeks ago we told you about a mission where as a reward for completing it we got to choose either a an ex we could add a missile slot to our ship, we could add a cannon slot to our ship, or we could add a free modification slot to our ship. Each one of us got to choose one of those things. We chose missiles, so we now have two X-Wings and a B-Wing who can have missiles, which ordinarily they can't. All three of us, oh, sorry, Mike, Owen, and I, Chris still in his A-Wing, took a, a, a modification, but Owen and Mike and I took 
assault missiles because we were just so damn sick of the Thai swarms <laughs> sneaking up on us. So we we took our load out. Then we randomly got allocated the next mission. So you're gonna have to believe me. I swear we didn't we didn't know this was gonna happen. We didn't build but, for this. And then our next mission was to attack a Tie Fighter training school. Their deployment was a Lambda shuttle bang smack in the middle of the table. Three Tie Fighters and three Tie Defenders, all at no, it was more than that. Wasn't no, it? it was like s- it was six, only three six defenders. And eight. It was six TIE Fighters and three TIE That's Defenders, right. That's right, yeah. all at range one of the shuttle. Now, but the, the, we'll say the reason it was at range one is because they would get uh, re-rolls from the shuttle. That's, yeah. that's the reasoning behind that. So that's, that's the deployment. So we come in, all three of us fire assault missiles at the shuttle because assault missiles do one damage to everything within range one of the, the intended victim of the missile, which they don't roll for. This so, was so good. So first, first, I think Owen fired first. Oh, yes. Whack, you know, hit, hit the, because we all took guidance chips as well as free modifications. So whack, the, the shuttle is hit. Every TIE fighter around the outside, one damage. Mine yep. comes in next, whack, every TIE fighter around. So I come in, yep. I come in third, fire the missile, hit the shuttle, splash, Three, the, the the tie fighters. What is? No, it was six. Six tie it was fighters. Six tie fighters. Because I took a photo. Yeah. It was six tie fighters killed in three shots. Yes. It was glorious. Even like <laughs> all if, defenders, half health. Yep. All the defenders lost all their shields, and the it was ridiculous. If look anybody out there who's who's playing or considering playing a Turi cluster. If you get to the mission where you capture the defender, choose missiles as your reward. It is amazing. I've never yeah. seen anything like... Oh. I think taking the missiles transformed the game for us because the challenge we had was putting through damage, except for Owen's bombs. <laughs> <laughs> and Owen was harvesting XP like there was yeah. no tomorrow. I think, I think um, all of us got that much XP... More XP combined than all the other missions that we had done previously. Mm. Just through the choice, the, the happy circumstance of assault missiles and everything being in range one. We couldn't have asked for something better. Yeah. A deployment that was all in range of our missiles. Yeah, but also because we were struggling against TIE swarms. Yeah. Getting, getting outnumbered yep. in Aturi is a very real threat. That's how the damage, that's how the risk of the game yeah. is done. Although I think this session I did actually take one for the team. So, Actually, oh, yeah, yeah, Mike. Mike got shut down by a tie defender. How how did that feel? Wow. Um, it was I like a, couldn't couldn't imagine. It was like a betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we got we got revenge for Mike by killing. We we tabled the yep. we tabled that mission. We killed every enemy yep. fighter on it. And actually, Owen, who hates defenders, yes, oh, tell tell the lovely audience what happened because of that. <laughs> This is how the conversation went. Uh, so guys, if, if, if we do this, if we table it, there will be no more defenders in a Turi, period. Uh, I don't I don't know, mate. Look, maybe we shouldn't cut our losses. We've won, we've won already, we should leave. No! <laughs> no more defenders, guys! <laughs> the, rule, the mission reward for that, for that mission was that if you killed every defender that was on the map, Tie defenders were not allowed to reappear in future missions. Yes. So we can actually, no matter what happens in future games of a tree that we play, we will never be attacked by tie defenders. Yes. And there was a little bit of debate about whether we bail on this mission or kill the defenders. And then Owen, Owen, Owen went through all the different shades of red that there are. And he was like, we're killing the defenders. They will not come back. You don't understand, guys. And, and we did. We killed we the did defenders. Yeah, Owen was so excited. We, there. Oh, far so out. So excited. Also... Defenders fly exactly like defenders would fly. Yeah, the AI defender is like white K turn, white K turn, white K turn. <laughs> they're actually they're on a really... roll of three, four, five, and six. He does a white K turn. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I remember we we were playing at we were playing at Mike's place and, and we met Zoe, his daughter, and and she asked how we decide where the enemy ships go because she rightly pointed out that if it was us to de- if it was up to us to decide their maneuver, we would just 
force them to do the move most beneficial to us. And we explained about the the AI movement system, but it was it wasn't a relevant point because Thai defenders, when they're AI, they move like people move. <laughs> <laughs> it ah uh, so. Other amazing things that have happened in Star Wars world recently. Rebels. Oh. Season three. My. Has God. <laughs> oh, this is, a, this is an X-Wing just sweet, sweet dream. So good. I, I have to say, this year between Rogue One and, and season three of Rebels, the, the closing for that, just amazing. Um, the, the battle in Rebels rivals the Battle of Scarif. This is an all-spoiler section for the next couple of minutes. Mm. Yeah, and if we you haven't watched... What if, what are you doing with your life? Yeah, yeah. catch up. <laughs> yeah. Catch up. If you haven't been watching Season 3 of Rebels, you're obviously in prison, and we hope you're sorry for what you did, but when you get out, you can watch <laughs> Season 3 of Rebels. Or use your privileges to download it. <laughs> it's, oh, it's so good. Yeah. The Thrawn finally comes back in the eyes of many as... Oh wow, this guy is really scary. Yeah, this guy is not a guy I want to mess with. That just like ruins everyone's like, day. The cold way he directed the battle. Mm. I love the way Thrawn's voice. He never raised his voice the entire season. Mm. He, just, mm. he didn't have to. No, but I was I was kind of hoping that the conclusion of this season would be benedict cumberbatch appearing on screen <laughs> and shooting thrawn in the face because the, the, the voice actor for thrawn is the villain from sherlock. a couple of seasons ago of sherlock and so spoiler for sherlock if you've been watching it there's an episode where sherlock holmes shoots a guy in the face and the guy he shoots in the face provides the voice for thrawn so i thought you know season three sherlock holmes shoots thrawn in the face yeah but i'm gonna have to say the sacrifice of um Commander Sato mm. sort of have, gave me tears, a lump in my throat. It did, it yeah. did. Um, Noble sacrifices always get me. Yeah. You could see in his face, you knew what he was going to do. Oh, the noble sacrifices sacrifices of the two, Soldier pilots. A and Soldier B, yes. the pilots, go, we're, we're, we're here with you, yeah. sir. And you know what, I have to say, that kind of, that's why it reminded me of Rogue One and the Battle of Scarif, is that what I really appreciate what um, the Expanded Universe is doing is it's giving us insight to all the people who were part of the rebellion who sacrificed themselves. Like in Rogue One, Battle Scarif, it's all those nameless soldiers who have just tiny, yeah. key, pivotal moments, but they're really important. And that's the same in, in Rebels here. And even when the pilots, like, you know, in, um, in this episode of Rebels, when they're going in and they're getting blown up in their Y-wings and everything, you're going, oh, that's, that's, that's tragic, that's sad, you know? Yeah. It's sort of like, you know, they're... They're obviously getting, you know, they're in real danger here. But I, I was I was kind of thinking there was going to be a cool reveal at the end. Even if it was in the final minute of the episode, they, they referenced the fact that the Masasi group was on their way. That's the Masasi temple from Yavin 4. Yes. And Death Star, and they referred to it as General Dodonna's Masasi group. Yeah. I thought it was going to be they were losing the battle, A-wings and Y-wings dropping left and right, then all of a sudden, <laughs> hyperspace, X-wings. Oh. That's what I thought. Oh, yeah. That's what I thought, and then the battle would be won, and then we would have to wait 12 months for the next season, and we'd see some x That's what I thought was going to happen. Well, the director has said that he wants, when the X-wings to come in, he, he wants it to be like uh, Apocalypse Now. Oh. When when the... Dun, 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 so they're going to come dun, dun, in over the horizon with the sun yeah. behind them. <laughs> no, like, he's, he's mentioned, he said that like that is what... That yeah. He wants that feeling that well, you get from... Uh, when you think about I it... I love the smell of proton torpedoes in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like victory. Um, <laughs> um, but when you think about it, Rebels has given us the origins for the A-Wing and the Y-Wing. Yes. So it's only fitting that the... And the B-Wing. And the B-Wing. True. And I love that episode. I hate that episode. Oh, really? I, fight, you guys. Yeah, fight, fight. <laughs> no, how can... Why? Yes. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> Do this. It's so stupidly <laughs> OP. It's like, here's a B-Wing. By the way, it can take out a Star Destroyer now. Yeah. In that's one shot. so good. It oh, it's so cool. <laughs> why don't we have a million of them? The origin for... Plus it was made by like some guy in a shed. I like that though. I like... Because he... But the way he said it, it was like... Like, I don't want anyone to touch this. You, yeah. don't, you don't understand. Like, I made this in a shed. But the... Uh, like two two weeks in a row, Tony Stark made this in a cave. <laughs> with a box of... With a box of... Uh, with a box of so, screws? Yeah. And 
I think we know in this is probably original canon. The yep. the X Wing was made for the Republic or for the Empire, but then they didn't because it was too expensive. The Rebels went, "We'll have them." Oh, kind of no. Like what happened was the um, so Incom was the company, but the engineers defected and they took the plans of the X Wings with oh, them. Okay. And the Arcs? Uh, no, not the Arcs, because that was Republic in era. The Clone Wars. Yeah, the, the, in the Clone Wars, but the um, so the X Wing was the successor to the Arc One Seventy. Yeah. But the engineers defected to the Rebellion and they didn't want to give the plans to the Empire, and so they took them. I mean, I'm, I mean, the yeah. Empire probably wouldn't have made them anyway. No, it was against their philosophy. It has yeah. shields. Has yeah. life support system. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the Thai Academy of Pilot might actually survive the mission. I mean, that's... Yeah. Can't have that. <laughs> no. I mean, the, the Thai Academy is basically like the the scene from Enemy at the Gates with the Russian army, where they give yeah. half the guys a clip of ammo, half the guys yep. a rifle, <laughs> and just wait, you know, when the one next to you dies, if they have what you need, grab it, then you're... You know, the one with the rifle shoots! Yes. <laughs> yeah. But look, overall, um, I like the Bendu. I'm a big fan of the Bendu. Mm. Um, Tom Baker. Yeah, Tom, Tom Baker. Tom. A little bit of Deus Ex Machina in terms of he just kind of swoops in and... Yeah, yeah, it's like, how could our heroes possibly get out of this? I don't know, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, Zeus. <laughs> I, did like, I yeah. did like the line, perhaps is the will of the Force, that the Jedi, that your kind, yeah. perish. Yeah. Bendu's like, I'm sick of you. Yeah. Think, Shut yeah. up, Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they got out basically because Kanan called the Bendu chicken and he got angry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah and he, the, the Bendu is grey. Yeah. Just, he is grey as they come. And he, he killed all those many rebels as he killed Oh, he did. Heroes. He kind of, he, he, yeah, he stomped, stomped down on everybody there. Yeah. Um, I think what's interesting is what's happening next season. We're fast approaching the episode four era. Fast approaching Rogue One. And Rogue yeah, do you One. I think they'll reference it. Because Rogue One referenced Rebels, so Rebels oh, will have to. They'll yeah. have to, yeah. It'll, it'll probably be like a big story arc. Mm. So it could be that the next season actually culminates in the sort of Battle of Scarif um, from the perspective of the characters within Rebels. We, um, have, to, we have to see, before that happens, we yeah. have to see General, uh, General Sindula, she becomes. She needs to become General Sindula. Yeah. yeah. And um, I what, guess with you know Commander Sato dead, yeah. at least like there's oh, less of a race. She'll get promoted. Yeah. She'll get promoted, but also the fate of Kanan and Ezra. Um, yeah. That's really pivotal and critical because coming into Rogue One and into Episode Four is like, well, there are no Jedi mm. that we know of. Let's yeah. not uh, let's not understate the story of Sabine and the Dark Saber. Correct, because the the Boba Fett movie is. I think it's called like Legend of the Dark Saber. There's the Boba oh. Fett movie. I yeah. didn't know that's the thing. Oh, okay. But yeah, Legend of the Dark Saber or something like that. That's so, interesting. I I didn't hate the Sabine arc, but it was the part I was least excited about. Mm. I, I I saw so much more potential there. It's, like she gets the she gets the Dark Saber. Oh, uh, yeah. We yeah. have a lady with a Dark Saber and a gun, and it's going to be amazing. And what she do immediately leave. I liked mm. I liked when Kanan was teaching her to fight. I yes, enjoyed, I enjoyed that. They brought back the Mandalorian Wars. Yes. Yes. I yes. loved when yes. when she when Fen Rao gave her that gauntlet yeah. thing and she tried to use it on Kane and he was like, "Spoiler alert! You guys tried this yeah. and you lost." <laughs> what did he say? No, he said that he, yeah. he we, said we uh, history it. lesson. He said history yeah. lesson. The Mandalorians yeah. lost the war. Yeah. 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 We use this in a war against you. History lesson. You lost the war. Yeah. Like, oh my god, that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, so yeah, Mandalorian Wars is now a thing again. Yeah, but that's fantastic. what. But Rebels has been fantastic in folding in some of the old EU. Yes. Um, and it's a yeah. great vehicle for actually drawing in those parts which a lot of fans love and making them canon. They've been cherry picking. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. great. That's, I, back in. Yeah. I wanted them to do that. You know, TIE Defender. The EU. The EU <laughs> Can EU. we talk about the TIE Defender? Can we? Yes, yeah, the episode. We did last time, because yeah. I hadn't seen it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool! <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool! <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. so excited for that. Like yeah, the yeah. one, the lone tie defender. Yeah. It was so mean on its own. It was so scary. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was perfectly pitched. A squadron yeah. of them. Can you imagine a squadron of them? Yeah. Uh, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's the. Yeah, Rebels has been. They brought in 
the stuff that we that we want, the stuff that we need. Yeah. They've brought in the Tide Defender and they've brought in the Mandalorian Wars. They've left out the stuff we don't need where every second person is force sensitive yeah. and IG-88 with Death Star's brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Kind of Death Star. But it's really interesting in that what is ostensibly a kid's cartoon is actually quite dark and quite sophisticated at times. I... I... <laughs> Yeah, it's a kid's cartoon, especially season one. They did this the same with um, the Clone Wars. It season matured. One, yeah, the show matures. I mean, the start of season three, Ezra mind controls a guy in an ATST to shoot his own men and then kill himself. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He just off a bridge. Hmm. That was. I was like, well, new haircut, new life. <laughs> yeah, and this is the new me. And they, the, the squad, you know, the ghost crew, they tell him off, and he's like, what? Yeah, I mean, you I mean, you do that, wouldn't you? I mean, who hasn't been playing Jedi Knight and like force push somebody up a balcony, being like, "Bye bye now, bye bye." <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, oh, it's. I don't know how it's different. I don't know how it's different, it's but to not, me, it's like, different. Yeah. Like, oh, he force pushed him off a thing, but no, no, he he like made him slowly commit suicide. And yeah, I think oh, that it was. Oh. I think that was from a Jedi perspective. It's the case where if you're using force, it's not using unnecessary cruelty. So that's where Ezra crossed the line yeah. in that he added that layer of cruelty. Because yeah. that's, that's the grey Jedi. Yes. I mean, if, you, if you kill somebody and you're using the Force, that's supposed to be horrible, but if you cut their head off with a lightsaber, it's like less horrible for some reason. Yeah. I'm not saying go around killing people. Like, yeah. don't. <laughs> but, you know. Well, maybe what will happen with Ezra, just wild speculation in, in Kanan, is that he, Kanan is now a Grey Jedi. Yes. At the end of Season 2. That's probably... So he will probably no longer refer to himself, or eventually will no longer refer to himself as a Jedi. Mm. He will cross the boundary and go, that, that Jedi wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Right. And it's the same as other figures such as Ahsoka and even Ezra, in that they're not actually Jedi. She's no. a former Jedi. He's a Grey Jedi. We don't know what's going to happen to Ezra. He may become Sith. Snoke. Yeah, and there's the theory ah. that yeah, there's that theory out yeah. there that he becomes he has the same nose. What? Yeah. yeah, that's one of the theories, fan Shut theories up. out there that he actually becomes Snoke. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, guys. All right, but anyway, it's been good. I'm loving my, it. My favorite, uh, my favorite theory about that is definitely the Knights of Ren are inspired by Sabine Ren. Oh, I had not heard that one. Basically, uh, oh, Ezra, that makes sense. Ezra makes with and guns. He, he's, so he just spells it slightly differently. Yes. It's like, oh, yeah, you can copy my homework, just change it a bit so it doesn't look <laughs> like you cheated. Uh, yeah. So, it's the end of the night. Uh, shout outs, guys. Yeah. A few from me. A few from Mike. Yep. So, uh, we have had the great pleasure of some of our listeners popping down to play games with us. So... Uh, Lee Cannon from Queensland, he came down and we had some great games. We caught up over beer and X-Wing, and that was a lot of fun. Um, he's just jumped into the game and he's been playing two K-Wing bombers. And I tell you what, mate, he's good. He's, he's really taken to the bombers. Bombers are amazing. Bombers are great. And can, uh, can introduce him to me. Okay. I will, actually, I, all bombers, I, all bombers. I mentioned you. I'd like to see a bomber face off. Oh, okay, done. Done. So, next, Ian, if you're listening next time in Melbourne... We'll put you up against uh, Owen and his uh, his bombs. My bombs. His bombs, and also um, Ian, who popped into the store last night to have a game. So he's out from uh, the outer rim. So big shout out to him as well. So thanks for coming in, and also thank Ian is a great player. By he, the way, I know, yeah. I know. Yeah, we should mention his Twitch channel. Yep, Fly Twitch. Casual. Fly Casual. So please help them with getting also more subscribers. Also YouTube channel and YouTube channel too. So look those guys up as well. And I guess we appreciate the feedback that we've been getting from the community. So thanks, guys. We sent we sent Zach Crowley some some cards recently as a thank you for liking our Facebook page a few months ago. And I I wrapped I wrapped the cards in a little plastic bag and wrapped that bag to a piece of plywood so they wouldn't get bent in transit. He sent us a picture of all that to let us know that it had arrived and he said thank you for the piece of Ozzy gunship <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious Z- Zach's a funny guy and I think the public deserve to know uh, I wanted to shout out to Dave Blankley from the UK he sent us uh, an email and it, it took me a while to open it up and this is a shout out to you buddy 
Uh, he sent us a picture of uh, the Ark, the Arks looking like they're Imperial, including the brand new, brand spanking, uh, what would you call this? The, the cockpit covers? And yep. the black and red with the white streak, and it looks awesome. Uh, the colors are just are just bang on. And also, he painted space on. He space painted his uh space base. Space base. Yeah, space base. Spaces. Space so, base. It's amazing. We're gonna put it up on Facebook. Yeah, it's up there now, actually. Ah, oh, excellent. Yeah, wow, we're on we're on target today. Yeah, <laughs> we are firing with all cylinders. We yes. are well oiled machine. <laughs> also, uh, for everyone out there, we have a Facebook page. And we don't toot our own horn very much, uh, but if you wouldn't mind, would you kindly like our Facebook page? Because it's likable. It's we're we're very likable. <laughs> All people. of us are very likable. Almost every day we put up some we put up funny pictures. We think they're funny. We made them ourselves. <laughs> just you know, there's we make content that isn't just podcasts. Yeah, we make we make X wing memes. We make. We make videos yes. that we think are funny. Yep. I agree. I think our videos are really funny. <laughs> but at the moment, we have about 70 followers on the Facebook page. We would like 100 Facebook followers. That would be nice. Yes. Once, we, once we will all blow off party poppers, if we do. Yep. We need party poppers. And look, the last thing I'd say is also a big shout out to all our international listeners. Yes. Um, it's fabulous. So I ran some stats the other day. And it's great. So I just wanted to say thanks to everybody in the US, in Europe, in Brazil. 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 Hi, guys. Do you want to guess yeah. what percentage of our list that we, Australian specifically, Melbourne podcast, do you want to yeah. guess what percentage of our listener comes from the United States? And from listening to an Australian podcast, yeah. less than 10%. 42. It's 42%. O- okay. How yeah. many, we're an Australian podcast. How many Australians <laughs> listen to us? But um, it's great. Percentage so, wise, Australians, how many? About twenty five percent. About twenty five percent. Twenty five percent. Yeah, fantastic. and the rest is from around the rest, which is fantastic. So it's oh, exciting. It's great. So thanks, guys. So um, we're going to explore a little bit more about how we can sort of make some content specific to you guys. So thank yes, you. Yes. Yes. Expand, ex- spread our wings, and fly internationally. Hell of a pilot empire. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, if that's all, guys. Um. Thank you very much for listening to Hell of a Pilot episode 9. Uh, we've been here, we've been your host, uh, of course. That's... That's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> we host podcasts. We're hosts. Um, thank you, Lockie. Thank you, United States of America. Uh, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Brazil. <laughs> thank you, listeners, and good night.